Hello, I will show you how to do the fourth chapter of the Correct C++ course. So if we go to the Correct C++ main page, we go to the fourth chapter called Hello, Command Line Interface. So the goal of this chapter is to write a command line interface application. We need to understand how the course works and we need to have written a correct Hello World program which was the previous chapter. So take a look at the exercise, blah blah blah. We're going to do that later. First we're going to do the first steps of how this course works. I'm just going to put it in a new tab so I can follow the same structure. So we need to fork our chapter. Let's fork our chapter. Fork. Well that's busy. Next step will be to clone my fork. Alright, let's do that. Oh, it's still busy. Just copy the URL here. Git clone that thing. And then we are going in that thing, correct cpp, hello, command line interface, done. We need to activate Travis CI, so I go to travisci.org to activate my freshly forked GitHub. Let's see if it's already present in my account. And I see it's already there, so no need to click sync account here. Activate it, done. Next step, modify the readme. Let's do that. So we're going to inside that readme mousepad. Readme, I like mousepad. And we're going to replace Richard Bilderbeek slash correct cpp underscore. We're going to replace that thing by your username. Correct, which is for me it's not correct cpp. Replace all done. So that's cool. Now we can see our build statuses correctly. Uh, next step, do the exercise. Ah, the fun part. Well, the next um, to do the exercise, I like to. Uh, so we need to do some programming here. There are some rules and helpful things here. And I like to first download the Qt Creator file because I like to use Qt Creator. So here is it. I'm going to save it, save pages in the correct CPP hello command line interface. To save it so I can work with that. So let's start Qt Creator then. Correct CPP, hello, command line interface, main.pro, open it with Qt Creator. Configure the project and there we have it. Alright, this, uh, this is not a good uh, complete program yet. So let's, um, let's just get the thing started again. So main has two versions and this is the thing that takes um, the command lines that the user gave uh, with it. Write uh, uh, a command line interface application. That's the documentation for Doxygen or any document generator. Alright, so let's see what we have to do. We have to write a command line interface program that writes hello to the screen. We can do that. If the user has supplied a command line argument, show it after adding a space between hello and the argument. We can do that. Ignore all command line arguments beyond the first. In all cases, the output should be followed by a new line. So if the user doesn't give arguments, so this is just uh, calling the executable, it should just say hello. If there is an argument, it should say hello in that argument, in this case world. And if the user calls it with two arguments, and the second one is I am ignored, it should ignore that I am ignored, I should just show you. Hello world. Alright, let's first get things started. Let's first put hello on the screen. Um, so, always there should be a hello on the screen. Let's do that. Hello, this should work. And always in the end, there should be a new line. So, let's do that as well. Um, and to get C out running, include IO stream. I'm just going to run it just to see if it's working. Um, oh, right, we didn't use the command line arguments. It's right, we didn't. Um, well, let's just remove them for now. Let's see if it runs. Second argument, correct, it should be character point array. Yes, so it's it's a bit small, I can't get this bigger, but um, yes, it, it says hello. Well, I'm going to get that commands back, that variable names back again. So if there is an argument, should show that argument. Well, if there is an argument, then argc is bigger than one. 
because we always have at least one argument which is the name of the application and then we should see out so arc fiat index 0 is the full path to the application arc fiat index 1 is the first command line argument that the user supplied and because arc c is bigger than 1 we are for sure that this index exists so we can, we can just say out that thing as well but we also have to put in a space there so uh, let's put a space there and I think it now works let's see if it compiles it compiles greatly alright but I can't check um, with I have not added any command line arguments I'm going to do that in Qt Creator now uh, on the left there's a thing called projects you can click on that then you have build and run settings, you have to go to the run settings and also this is a bit small, I can't get this bigger so you can put your command line arguments there so let's uh, let's not make it a hello world, let's make it hello moon so I just put the word moon there and if I now go run my program, I, I like to see the code when I run the code when I run the program, it says hello moon looks awesome, let's see if I do some um, if I run it with more arguments, hello moon and back again for some nonsense. And if I run it, it should still say again, hello moon, well done. So this appears very correct. Is it correct? Well, I've documented it. A CLI application. So let's let's write a bit down. That either says hello for no arguments. Um, when there are no arguments, when the user has not supplied any command line arguments, else will show hello space and the first and only the first supplied argument. So that looks neat. Alright, I'm going to um, go to the next step. I think I finished this. I think I've nailed it. Let's take a look at what we should do now. We've done the exercise. Push your code. Let's do that. Git add minus one. Git commit. Nailed it. No, done exercise. Let's be, let's be. Git push. Oh, hello world. This is not the correct folder. Say the correct CPP. Hello, command line interface. That's where we are. Oh, oh, oh. CD, correct CPP. Hello, command line interface. Get at. Done. Exercise. Up, get push. So we've now pushed our code. Let's take a look at our GitHub. So it's not updated yet. It's too, it's too soon. Let's refresh it. Yeah, we should be done exercise. Oh, we did it. We did it. It's been, it's, it's working. I can close this. And I'm going to see what Travis is up to. So Travis has, hasn't had any builds for this repository yet. But if you click on build history, it will show me um, uh, what it's doing now. And this will take some time, so I'm not going to um, kill all the time by just chatting. So I'll be right back. And then... Um, it will take a couple of minutes, so see you soon. Hello. So Travis is um, done building, and uh, we see it's green. We see that this status thing is not um, updated yet. Perhaps if I refresh it now, it will turn green. Oh, yep, there it is. So let's take a look at our GitHub. So this was gray. Refresh, refresh it. It's green. Code coverage is 100%, which we'll be doing more about on the next chapter. So I did this. Uh, this chapter correctly.